to be good for Major League Baseball and, um, you know, bring some attention to that pitch. But it's it's it is a very odd pitch, and there's a there's a it's a it's a special thing. Now, now you you touched on R. A. Dickey, and he's the reason everyone now is interested in knuckleball. Do you do you think that a guy who specifically throws that pitch, um, and again, this is you know, I'm not a pitcher, so I wouldn't know this. Is is it a pitch that can shorten a career, or is it one that's not too hard on the shoulder, but it's just a little trickier to to get out there? It can definitely lengthen a career. I don't think it can shorten a career. I think it can lengthen a career, and that's why you know uh, Charlie Huff, a knuckleballer that pitched a long time in the big leagues with the Dodgers, pitched till he was 47. Um, same thing with uh, Tim Wakefield, pitched till he was 44, or 45. So these guys, uh, these guys can uh, can lengthen their careers by throwing by, by throwing knuckleballs, just because it's not as taxing on your arm and. You don't have to throw it as fast. It's not a 95 mile an hour fastball. That, that puts a lot of wear and tear on an on an arm, on a shoulder, on an elbow. If you're throwing sliders and breaking pitches and 94 or five mile an hour fastballs, and and then those guys, you run out of gas. You can't throw 95 when you're, you know, when you're 40 years old. And there's only a few that are able to do it. Roger Clemens and Mariano Rivera and Nolan Ryan. There's only a few that can do it. And so it gives you a chance. And so a lot of these pitchers will try it at the end of their career. It's just that hard to control and uh you know it's, it's weird because no two pitches are the same and uh because the the way that the air and um you know whether you're in humidity or not they all it all has something to do with the way the ball knuckles and if you can keep that the ball from rotating and it, it those seams hit the wind man it can cut left and cut right and and hitters just can't put the barrel on the ball and that's why you know these guys were successful they were able to control that pitch but there's not many that's been able to do it. You, you know that's and that, and that is so interesting that um, you say that it that it, it could actually help you prolong your career because it, you know I, I'm I'm 43 years old and I've been watching baseball since I was probably five or six and I and we we, we talk a lot of sports and I've dev, and I've made this comment before that the pitchers just don't seem to have the stamina that they used to have. And, you know, you're saying here that if if more of them threw the knuckleball, they'd probably have a little longer career. So I find that interesting that a lot of pitchers aren't, aren't – a lot more pitchers aren't looking into it or maybe practicing it a little more because, you know, you got yep. a guy like Strasburg who's, you know, young and, you know, he's already had major surgeries. And then here in Philadelphia we have uh, an older pitcher in Roy Halladay who was – Lights out for his first couple of years here, and now in the last year he's struggling. He can't even get his pitches over, um, you know, 87 miles an hour at this point. And he was throwing, you know, heaters up in the ninth in the ninth inning. And, and I think it all comes down to you know playing smart. And you know, I'm a huge fan of the knuckleball, and, I, and I'm just surprised that more pitchers haven't haven't tried it. Yeah, I, I think it's a control issue, to be honest with you. And, and uh, you know, just it's, it's mental. There is a lot of mental to it because you, you it's not like you're a traditional pitcher where you throw inside fastballs and outside fastballs and breaking balls away. And you don't really work the plate like a traditional pitcher does. You pick a spot and you throw that thing and let it let it do what it does. I mean, it's a completely, it's a, it's backwards. It's like here, see it and hit it. It's almost like you're throwing batting practice, but you're throwing, it's like you're playing a, a, a game of catch or something. It's so different and you just got to trust it. And a lot of pitchers aren't, they, they're not used to throwing a ball up there and, and hoping that it doesn't get hit 500 feet, you know, and, and that's the, a knuckleballer just has to trust that that thing's going to knuckle. And, you know, he throws at 68, 70, 72 miles an hour. It's not 90 miles an hour anymore. So it's a completely different mental game to the to that pitch. And that's why a lot of people probably couldn't handle it, just because they don't want to just toss it up there and hope that it does well. And they don't believe, you know, they might not believe in it, and they might not have spent enough time throwing it, and they might not can control it. A lot of knuckleballers walk a lot of guys. Ari Dickey didn't last year, and that's why – he won the Cy Young. He was 20 and six. He walked 60 guys all year and struck out over 200. So you look at his numbers and go, "Wow, that's that's some of the best numbers in baseball." And it was last year, but most guys can't do that 
you know, they can't control it. It, it was hard as heck for me to control. I, I pitched in three or four spring training games, and I walked five guys in four or five innings, and, you know, I struck out three or four guys, but I walked four or five guys. So it's a constant battle to control that thing. And I imagine you, since the since the hitters don't see it that often, it's it's got to be, a, if it's on the money, it's got to be one of the most difficult pitches to hit because it's not like you're seeing it, uh, you know, that many times a year. It, it really is. It's a. It is the the great equalizer for sure because you know hitters they'll they'll come into a series where they have to face a knuckleballer and if they're going good they'll they'll ask the manager to sit out because they don't want to have to change up their approach at the plate. They want to stay with what they're they're doing and and you know they face those ninety mile an hour guys all the time. And then you throw this big wrinkle in there that looks like a softball but it moves all over the plate and you can't put the barrel on it. They want they don't want to. They don't want to go bad when they're going good, and a lot of guys will try to take those days off. So, you know, and a lot of a lot of it has to do with where it's, the game's being played because the pitch is different in the heat than it is in in you know high altitude. So you don't want to be a knuckleball pitcher in Colorado. You want to be one in Texas. Now, no, I got to ask this because you have played both sports. What was what was more difficult and harder to? keep your concentration on being a quarterback or being a pitcher? Oh, being a quarterback by far because of the time spent in the uh, classroom and watching film. And, um, you know, you spend six hours a day watching film. And I was a backup the entire time. I was behind the first pick in the draft on several occasions in the in the NFL. And I wasn't playing on Sunday. So for me to sit in a classroom for six hours a day all week, every day and then not to be able to play on Sunday and then start the next week doing the same thing, it's very difficult. And I'm I'm ADD as it is, so uh, being in the NFL was a lot tougher just mentally than baseball, even though baseball was just long seasons. It was it was tough just not being able to play. Now, if I'd have been able to play a lot more, man, it would have been fun because that NFL experience is a completely different animal and it's a, it's a lot of fun and a lot of energy. All right, so what what – what goes through your mind when you're about to throw a pass in the NFL and you see one of them huge, huge defensemen just running at you? Well, what's what's the thought process at that point? Because you know you're going to get hit, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that that's really what separates the uh, the good. I, I, I tell you, everybody that's in NFL in the NFL is a good, but it's what separates the good from the very best. And if you watch Tom Brady, and if you watch Peyton Manning, it's like they don't see those guys that are breathing down their throats and, and trying to knock their heads off. And it's amazing how they, whether it's the, their feel in the pocket or, you know, the way that they move and, and, and without without dropping their eyes as a quarterback, you've got to keep your eyes downfield because you can't if you look at the rush, you're going to get affected by the rush, and then you're not going to be able to read the defense and the secondary and the linebackers and all that's happening on the field. And you know, whether it's man or zone and whether there's a blitz or not and whether they're playing prevent or cover two or whatever, there's a million things going on. So for you to call the play in the huddle, call the motion correctly, you know, read how to play, have guys, you know, whether they block in front of you or miss blocks or there's a blitz and there's a man, on, you know, that that's not accounted for that's coming, you know, running for your head. You know, there's a lot going on, and that's what separates – the good from the best is guys that can actually understand what's going on, but can account for every player on the field, their players on offense and the defensive players know where they're at and can move and uh, accordingly and deliver balls on time and accurate. I mean, there's a whole lot going on in, in a game of football if you're the quarterback. If you ever get a chance, watch a football game, an NFL football game or a college football game in HD because the cameras are or, or, or set behind the quarterback's helmet, and you can see what a quarterback sees on every down instead of just a regular, you know, direct TV cameras or, or cable cameras, the HD cameras. It's really worth watching a game, at least one, uh, in HD because you feel like you're the quarterback, and you can see those guys breaking free that are that are unblocked, and you can see those blitzing backers, and you can you can see the receivers coming out of their cuts from a quarterback's perspective because of where they put those cameras in those stadiums. So if you get a chance, it's a it's a fun deal. It, you know, it's funny you mention that, Josh, because I have a 3D TV, and they do play some of the college games in the 3D, 3D HD, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I've told my friends that I, I, I sat there.